This reading is being done with the permission of Scholastic. Chapter 5 Won't you join me and the men? asked Uncle Gunther when the lunch whistle blew. Frieder hurried to take his apron and grab his lunch pail. No thanks, Uncle. I have lunch mates. Uncle Gunther shook his head, waving him off. Your father told me about them. Go on then, but only if I might meet them someday, or better yet, eat them for dinner. Hmm, I wonder what these lunch mates are. Friedrich grinned and ran from the factory, knowing Uncle Gunther only teased. He skirted around buildings and across a large grassy field to the edge of a pond. Beyond, a dense wood loomed. Friedrich slipped through the shrubbery to his favorite spot, where a felled tree lay on its side. He sat down and three red-necked greaves waddled out of the forest, rushing towards him. Friedrich tossed bits of bread to his greedy friends. As he ate, a wind picked up. Dark clouds drifted overhead, obscuring the sun. The greaves' high-pitched quacking punctuated the air. Ladies, are you ready to be my audience? Please use your best concert manners, said Friedrich. The greaves ignored him, chirping and pecking at the crumbs. It seems to me that we can use our context clues to um, think about what a grieve really is. So what I just read was that um, the greaves were waddling out of the forest, rushing towards him, and that he was feeding them bread, and that they were quacking as they came up to them, or up to Friedrich. So what do you think a grieve is? A grieve is a bird that some people will mistake for being a duck, but they're actually very different from ducks in um, a lot of ways. However, both grieves and ducks live primarily on the water. Um, they can make kind of similar noises sometimes. So we can, when, we th when you think about a grieve, if you picture like a, a duck or another small bird on the water, um, you've kind of got the right impression. In our um, link to our extension activities, I'll include some information about grebes and um, how they differ from ducks so that you can learn more information about them if you are curious. Right. The pines rustled in a long drawn out swoosh. From the nearby lumber yards, he heard the pinging of a hammer on metal. Quack, chirp, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Within the rhythms, Friedrich heard Bram's lullaby. He hummed the, meta, the melody. He picked up a stick, closed his eyes, and lifted his arms. He pictured the orchestra. His right hand kept the tempo with the baton. His left cued the instruments, bouncing on an invisible plane to bring the strings, waving in the woodlands, flicking his wrist to usher in the brass, pointing to the harp. He opened his eyes and realized the music he heard was not only in his mind. Someone was playing a harmonica. The notes were clear, the composition complex. When he slowed the tempo, the music slowed too. When he increased, it quickened. A musician was following his direction, but from where? He looked around. There was no one about. He dropped his arms, yet the music continued. The lilt was slow, resonant, and haunting. One moment, the notes sounded as if they came from a flute, the next a clarinet. In the low tones, he could hear the cello. Friedrich had never heard the playing like this before. He listened, mesmerized, his eyes and ears searching to determine the origin of the sound. They settled on an open window on the uppermost floor of the warehouse across the field. He sucked in his breath. The graveyard. Hmm, I wonder why there would be a graveyard at this factory. 
seems like a weird thing. I'm wondering if they don't actually mean a graveyard for like human beings that have passed away, but something else. Friedrich had never been there, but he'd heard all the tales. It's where machines go to die. Strange things happen in the shadows. There are glimmers and apparitions. Some people go up and never come down. Friedrich hesitated, but the song was so compelling, so curious. How frightening could it be? Besides, they were only rumors. He gathered his lunch, walked to the entrance, and left his pail on the threshold. Surely someone who made such music could not be a danger to him. He opened the heavy door and stepped inside the foyer. The music came from far above. Slowly, he climbed the dim stairwell. At the top floor, Friedrich pushed open a door and entered a cavernous room. Floor to ceiling, arched windows ran down either side, but only a few needle-like gleams of light penetrated the years of grime on the glass, leaving the room in shadows. Old machines, bun bulky figures of steel and iron, filled the space. On the ceiling, dozens of wheels had been suspended, and below them on the floor or attached to tables were their counterparts, all the elements of a once elaborate pulley system. The leather belts, now disconnected and useless, dangled from the rafters like black snakes. It's where machines go to die. Huh, so we were right. It wasn't a graveyard for humans, but rather a very creepy room that, um, or a creepy building that is full of machines that are dead or no longer in use. The mu music was louder now but there was still no sign of a musician. The stale, dusty air made Friedrich sneeze. The music stopped. Hello, he called. His word echoed. Hello, hello. A mouse skittered across his path. The refrain from the lullaby picked up again. It seemed to come from the far corner of the room. The music was so insistent that it pulled him forward Tears sprang to his eyes. Who played such be so beautifully and with such passion? He maneuvered around the deformed skeletons of machines. A large contraption covered with a dingy oilcloth blocked his view of the corner. He edged around it. Again, the music stopped. He called out, please show yourself. Once more, he heard the lullaby. He peered into his dimness into the dimness at the spot where he was certain the song had originated. No one was there. Friedrich went to the window he had seen from the field. He was sure it had been open, but now it wasn't. The glass was dirty and opaque, like all the others. Spiderwebs draped the corners. The floor was covered with an undisturbed, undisturbed carpet of dust. No one had stood there for some time. Glimmers and apparitions. Was it a ghost he'd heard or someone playing a trick on him? Friedrich turned and studied the immense space. The only way out was the way he had entered. No one could have slipped by him without notice. Without notice. He turned to the window again, a wooden, claw-footed desk and sat in front of it. He leaned across it and rubbed at the grime on the glass, creating a porthole. He could see the felled tree where he'd eaten lunch and the greaves nearby. This was the right window. He tried the latch and as he did, bumped the desk. Something rattled. Friedrich opened the top drawer. What do you think is inside? Based on what we know from the prologue, that different people are going to be involved in this book surrounding, um, and, that, and this book, and they're gonna be interacting with this harmonica. Do you think he's going to find the harmonica in the, in the desk? That's 
my prediction. Ever since even a couple of pages ago, as I was reading and the music was playing and it kind of things started to get a little eerie and a little creepy and a little fairy tale like, I started to think, hmm, maybe we're starting to get to the point where the prologue and this section of the book connect. Let's read on to find out if my prediction is correct. Inside was a harmonica box. He picked it up and studied the lid. Marine band made by M. Hohner. Germany, number 1896. He opened it and removed the model that the company usually exported to the United States of America. The date on the box indicated the year it was introduced, but the cover plate looked newer and the body older. Opposite the side with the blowholes on the black painted edge was a tiny red letter M. This sounds a lot like the um, harmonica that Otto was playing and that Otto got from the gypsy at the beginning of the book. Was this instrument, was this the instrument someone had been playing? If so, how? He had heard music, hadn't he? He felt a chill and shivered, his eyes darting from shadow to shadow. The factory whistled, groaned, Friedrich jumped. Strange things happen. Some people go up and Quickly, he put the harmonica back into the box, slipped it into his chest pocket, and retraced his steps through the room. He scrambled down the stairs, tumbling the last few steps until he burst out the door. He had to bend over for a minute to catch his breath before grabbing his lunch pail and running back to his building. Nephew, what happened? You look pale as a ghost said Uncle Gunther when Friedrich reached his table. I may have heard one, said Friedrich, putting on his apron and describing what had just happened. There's a logical explanation, said Uncle Gunther. The sound of the music is like water finding a path. It travels in many directions. It might have amplified sound coming from a different floor in the building. Friedrich wasn't so sure. The music had felt so present as if the harmonica wanted him to find it. Do you suppose I could keep it? I don't see why not. The company gives us several each year. Friedrich stepped closer and pointed to the red M. What do you make of this? Uncle Gunther studied it. It looks like a craftsman, craftsman's mark, but it's not customary to do such a thing. It won't affect the sound. The instrument looks like it's in good shape. Cover plate's been changed. There's no telling how long it was in the desk. Probably belonged to an employee from years ago. You'll want to clean and tune it. Uncle Gunther clapped him on the back. Friedrich, my boy, you'll be a hero if the men find out you went to the graveyard alone. Most of them wouldn't dare. As I'm reading this section, I'm thinking back to the character traits activity we did before where we um, made some character traits about, um, about Friedrich. And one of the things I said though is that it seemed that Friedrich was like an anxious or nervous person a lot. And I'm starting to get the sense that Friedrich might be changing a little bit. Um, as we read, characters often change. They grow, they develop. Um, different things happen to them, just like we as people change as we get older and as we experience different things. So I'm wondering how this experience of braving the graveyard has and might change Friedrich. As he walked home that evening, Friedrich pulled the harmonica from his pocket and lifted it to his lips. He blew a few chords. Uncle Gunther was right. It was out of tune. But for now, Friedrich didn't mind. He played the first few notes of Alle Vogel, Sin schon da. All the little birds are back. 
The harmonica had a rich, ethereal quality, the same alluring sound he had heard earlier in the graveyard room. The more he played, the more the air around him seemed to pulse with energy. He felt protected by the cloak of the music, as if nothing could stand in his way. He Was he just excited that Elizabeth was coming home and his family would be together again? Or was it something else? He became so entranced by the tone of the harmonica and the simple hypnotic song that he'd passed the schoolyard before he remembered to feel anxious. He turned down his own block and realized he'd walked almost all the way home without hunching over. He didn't even mind that Miss Mrs. Von Gerber, their next door neighbor, who always bothered him with gossip or home remedies for his birthmark, was sweeping in front of her geranium boxes. Instead of avoiding her as usual, he called out, hello, Mrs. Von Gerber. She stopped and stared in surprise. Uh, good evening, Friedrich. He waved and slipped the mysterious harmonica into his pocket. With every step up the front walk, it seemed to thump against his chest like a heartbeat. Wow, that reminds me of when Otto used it as strength to get out of the forest once he had already spoken, spoken to um, Eins, Zwei, and Dry. So is Friedrich using it this in the same way? It seems to me. Chapter six. Chapter six. Friedrich was embraced by the aroma of roasted meat and cinnamon and apples. He grinned as he hung up his coat on the hall tree. Then he rubbed his hands together with anticipation. Who do you think he's, what or who or what do you think he's anticipating being home? My guess is it's probably Elizabeth. And I'm using my, what I remember from before, the fact that, um, that everyone seems to look forward to her cooking as a way to predict that that's what might happen in the story. The old cuckoo clock with its carved pine cone weights hugged the wall. The tiny door framed in a wreath of linden wood leaves and forest animals opened. The cuckoo slid forward and chirped the hour. Too bad, old friend, said Friedrich. You cannot enjoy our meal. In here, a voice called from the kitchen. Friedrich found father at the table and Elizabeth facing the stove, stirring something meaty with a wooden spoon. An apron was tied to her waist over a gray skirt and white blouse. Friedrich's eyes swept the small kitchen. The walnut hutch with his mother's collection of hand-painted saucers the counter with the tin canisters sitting in descending order, the window with the green shutter, and Elizabeth finally home. He rushed up behind her, put his arms around her waist, and lifted her off the floor. Friedrich, put me down! Father laughed. Friedrich released her. Did you miss me, Elizabeth? He was almost, she was almost 18, taller than Friedrich, but not by much with the same blue eyes as his and his father's. Her blonde hair hung long and loose, and her dimpled cheeks were flushed pink from the warmth of the room. Fresh bread sat on a board on the table. Spitzla. Spitzel rested in a pan. A strudel dusted with sugar cooled on the back of the stove. Friedrich reached around to tug on her apron string. She dodged him, laughing, and threatened with the wooden spoon. Have you tried to scrub off a patient's birthmark with the shoe brush yet? He asked. She put her hands on her hips. Will you never forget that? I don't forget easily. Remember when we used to play hide and seek? And if you found me before I was safe, your reward was to bandage me like a mummy? Father nodded. Even then you were a nurse. Last year, Elizabeth went to Stuttgart to live with their only relatives besides Uncle Gunther, mother's cousin and his wife and their daughter, Margaret, who was in nursing school too. 
But now, Elizabeth's last three months of training would be in a local hospital with their family physician, Dr. Braun. It's good to have you home, said Friedrich, saluting. I am ready to be ordered about. Friedrich, Elizabeth pointed to the spoon 